Guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is now game three. I want to apologize to my Twitch audience really fast. I just did like a, I don't know, like a 10 minute rant. And I know a lot of people, yeah, I've got some people like, I came here to avoid politics and just focus on StarCraft. That is what this is kind of for me, honestly. And that is a nice thing about this is it's kind of a place where you can tune your brain out for a little bit so you can get back to the rest of the stuff. Like, I'm not saying, like, don't stay here and ignore everything else, but, you know, take a break. It's important. Also, things aren't, like, yeah. Maybe I should actually, never mind. Now I'm still derailing it. Nine o'clock, or bottom left, this is on Apocalypse, by the way. Great match in game one, game two. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Bottom left-hand corner, we got two suns starting as the Peach, Pro, the Peach Protoss. Well, the qualification, we got Fisheye starting as the Pink Protoss. I don't know who's going to take this. I cannot color swap, even though I kind of want to, because it is double yellow. This is on Apocalypse. And given the nature, here's the thing, given the nature of game one, game two, I would usually say, oh, I could see Fisheye swinging back and pulling this one, uh, especially because this is a rampless map where Dragoon can really, really shine. At the same time, I know Tucson executes a very, very good uh, early factor pressure game. And so I would not be shocked actually to see Tucson go for a two or three mixed factory push in the early game here. Or maybe uh, delay it a little bit and go for a five factory, I don't know. But I could see him going factory first. Some sort of, excuse me, factory fa first build on this map. And really giving Fisheye a run for his money. We'll see if Fisheye on the opposite end goes for one gate into expansion. Or if he wants to go ahead and utilize that lack of ramp that's on Apocalypse. And just try to play an aggressive ground game uh, from there. So, could be interesting between these two players in particular. So we got one gateway down. I would be a little bit shocked to see double gateway open. I'm not expecting that. We do have gas getting grabbed. So that possibility is in fact open and an SCV scout making its way across. So let's see if it goes bottom right or top left or 12 o'clock to the goes to the left. Initially, it looks like it's trailing out towards the right. So we're going to end up scouting Fisheye in the late position. We do have a defensive first cell being constructed and it looks like Fisheye does want to go one gate into Nexus. So trying to play, it's not a 12 Nexus, but it's still a very economically aggressive opener. And this is going to go into what looks like at this stage, maybe it could be a one factory push or it could be a two factory opener. We'll have to see as the game progresses. So SCV scouted bottom right. See if it trails around to the 12 o'clock. We've got a probe actually making its way out. The Zealot also making its way out. Sees an SCV exiting, which provides no information. First Marine out in the front. This is actually going to get interesting because this first cell is uh, opting to be aggressive out in the forward field. Uh, there will be... So, so the Marine's going to have to run for his life. So the Zealot's going to have like a small window though where it can create some chaos. But it will see that early factory. And the SCV is going to be able to come up and find that Nexus. So the first Marine, nice reaction time, going to go ahead and pull back. So we're going to have three Marines out, which is usually pretty good. Not if they're bunched up like this. They want to try to keep... Usually want to spread them out. And we have that first Vulture now constructing. Some SCVs pulling off line. It looks like there's one SCV on gas now. So it looks like this might just turn into one, one factory. Uh, so where he did have the option to keep the three SCV on there. It looks like this is actually just turning into a stable standard uh, factory. Uh, single Vulture, three Marine into expansion build. Although... Killed all that, and now is moving up with aggression and pulled a few additional SCVs upon seeing that earlier Nexus. We do have Cybernetics Core building. We'll have a Dragoon out. We have a Zealot on the field. The SCV's taking some damage. I'm wondering if Fisheye's going to recognize this. This is Tucson being very, very aggressive here. And it might catch Fisheye by surprise, because usually Terran don't do this sort of thing. It's like they get that base up. Oh, so two probes going to die immediately. So nice play. The Dragoon making its way forward. It's surrounded. The probes swing, swing back around, and now it is a worker fight. Three Marines right there. That's gonna. That's one dead Dragoon. The Zealot making its way forward. And it looks like that bunker's gonna finish, and a single Marine able to sneak in, which is pretty significant. So it's gonna be a while before range finishes. The, there's a lot of health on that Nexus. The Zealot gets wiped out by that Vulture, and the probes are gonna have to back up, and this is looking a lot like Game 2. Still no natural expansion grab. Tucson holding right the second and this is kind of interesting he repaired that vulture pretty massively i'm wondering if he's i don't think he's going to be able to get this nexus though with everything that's out here uh he'll be annoying but 
this is this is kind of an interesting game plan, honestly, that Tucson's kind of forwarding. I like the Dragoon sneaking through to get some damage. A little bit risky because the Vultures could just drop everything and try to sneak out past the natural. It looks like instead they're going to wait for that Marine to join. The Marine, yeah, to wipe out the Dragoon on the front. This is still buying Fisheye some time to get that range up. So all of the attack forces off there. Single Marine attacking that Nexus. And more Dragoons being created. It looks like another Dragoon split out. So actually Fisheye able to stagger the Dragoons out away to prevent additional reinforcements from making their way to that natural. And Tucson kind of biting on it and forcing these fights here rather than drawing it back to that bunker line where he has a little bit of a concentrated fire advantage. It looks like he is going to be able to get a second Marine in there and additional Vultures here. And again, this Nexus is it looks like it might get wiped out. It's going to be close. We have range finish now, but we have three SEVs to repair. And we got two Marines in there, and they are there's no pylon that's getting side targeted here. So he either has to offer up some Dragoons to go ahead and take some damage. Never mind, there's the third Dragoon. That Dragoon gets wiped out. So that uh, offering up right there. Look, are the SCVs going to be in time? The two, two SCVs repairing. Yeah, I think this is going to be a dead Nexus this time from Tucson. Tucson has already started up that command center at the natural. And bye-bye Nexus. Fisheye now in the red. This time he remembered to uh, keep the, the probe count queuing, but this is all of a sudden a flip where Tucson able to get with again some nice aggression able to end up with the economic lead as far as the turnaround. Vulture going to get wiped out. Supply counts even. Fisheye moving right back out to go ahead and rebuild that Nexus. So now command center built. Bunker is going to be up. You have a siege tank out. Siege check on the way. You got three Dragoons making their way. Some Marines kind of scattering around. Are they going to be, are any of these Marines going to be able to make it back? This Marine looks like it's going to lose its life, but that might save the lives of additional Marines. This Marine actually sweeping back is able to confirm the Nexus follow-up. Two Marines in the bunker, and this is plenty to keep those Dragoons back. Two, two Siege Tanks, two Marines in a bunker, that's 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 plenty. And Fisheye uh, might want to pull back here. I don't think he wants to sacrifice these Dragoons, especially with Siege Check right around the corner. Two Factories up, Siege Check finished. <clears throat> Tucson with the economic lead, even four workers on top of that, so sitting pretty. Uh, fish eyes options, maybe he tries to grab a third Nexus rapidly, but with this Vulture sneaking up around the corner, mine's also upgrading behind. Might be some trouble. We do have a robotics facility and observatory, or what the other thing Fish Eye could do is recognize that he was able to macro his way back into the previous match, maybe make something happen. Tucson, however, getting that Vulture around the corner is huge, because it might be able to sneak a lot of additional information, specifically if there's a, a quick third base grab or not. This time it's not a weakened Nexus though, so Fisheye can be a little bit more aggressive with his uh, Dragoon movements. Siege Shank's very aggressive from Tucson though. Is he gonna go grab a quick third himself? He's making his way out towards the third, as, as though he's just gonna go for a quick third base grab. He is floating a lot of resources here. The Vulture looks like it's been spotted and taking a good amount of damage. Dragoon's trying to clear the field. He yeah, he's going to go for a quick third base. I actually love this play because I think Tucson recognizes that there's not a lot that that Fisheye doesn't have uh, sufficient Dragoons to really press and make something happen with this. So he's going to have a very quick economic uh, shift. It looks like he's going to go for plus three weapons. The Vulture able to confirm that at least there was no Nexus up there. No second gas as of yet, by the way. We do have, it looks like, two additional gateways getting tacked on, so Tucson in a really good situation here. Nine o'clock base getting checked. Right the second, the observer able to move in. It's going to be able to look at the factory count at the le uh, at the very least, able to get in underneath that missile turret, which is uh, big for player of Fisheye's caliber. <clears throat> and now we have that third Nexus grab. That usually is the more, I'm kind of actually surprised the Vulture checked this location rather than maybe just wanting to make sure it was nothing sneaky, because the top left is usually the more typical base. Um, that is established here. And I haven't seen any additional vultures. Maybe going to wait for speed before additional vulture sneaks out there to see if there's something at that location. Observers making the way across. Is that observer going to be able... is going to suicide in and confirm that command center here at the 6 o'clock location. Now we'll see if Fisheye's response is to just go ahead and get an observer out to clear... that mine's actually not blocking that nexus to go ahead and grab a fourth. The probe makes its way there. That will be an alert to Tucson. Overall, we've got two machine shops down, by the way, and the armory going ahead and constructing. Uh, with that quick third, Tucson's in a situation where he could go up and 
work with again a seven factory count um maybe even make his way all the way up to eight if he wanted to fill that in before going for the armory fill-in uh looks like fisheye checking around the corner making sure no vulture was there and he is going to drop that nexus that observe that mine is going to provide that forward warning we have two dragoons nearby the vulture trying to make its way up it looks like it's going to get wiped out so before that third nexus is already up we got that fourth nexus queued so this is going to turn into a very fierce mid-game macro battle potentially two additional vultures skirting their way out six o'clock base is already rolling very healthy worker count for tucson uh the only thing is is he's going to be i expect to be floating uh some resources here because he doesn't have the factories as of yet and he whoa this is not what i expected tucson is going to take six siege tanks and try to push that top right and actually this might work not a lot of vulture support but the two the two dragoons aren't going to be able to deal with this many siege tanks and if those tanks siege it's going to be challenging for fisheye to engage particularly without any and there's there's a good amount of mines in between here as well so that's going to be quite the time delay nexus canceled tucson likes that so he's just going to back up let's see if he's able to get his siege tanks out of here though because now a bunch of dragoons bearing down wanting to find them looking for a cutoff route the observer trying to find them not able to find them at that location wow risky plays both directions it pays off for tucson massively though so the siege tanks able to roll around some more mines planted to delay fisheye so now it's going to be three bait so tucson had the earlier third base looks like he is getting a, a fourth factory up and i presume he's going to fill in the fact so, so there's the the resource float a little bit um some vultures now sneaking up able to clear out that probe to prevent an additional fourth take Fisheye doing his best to kind of clear vision between point A and point B. I don't know if Fisheye got an observer in there to find that additional mine. But a great play from Tucson. That was really heads up and ballsy, honestly. Because uh, a lot of a lot could have gone wrong right there. If the Dragoons had just ignored the siege tanks at the upper right and have had dove in, they probably could have picked off that command center. They might have been able to dive on the natural expansion. There's a lot that could have gone wrong with that. Vultures sneaking in. Looks like they managed to get a few worker kills that I missed on the map. And the top left, the Dragoon's starting to filter out to get some map control. Fisheye up a little bit of supply, not really where he wants to be. And now that that factory count is up to the seven count, Tucson's got a big bank to just start rolling a lot of mech. We do have Stasis already in construction. We've got the in that uh, Arbiter building, but I think Tucson's got such a lead as far as all of the... Uh, just the pure mech build and the economy that he's in really strong position to do whatever he wants. It looks like he's going to move out with the plus one weapons right this second. Sending out a SCV to the bottom right to check things out. Fisheye engaging that aggressively. The observer seeing the siege tanks moving across. And now, interestingly enough, Tucson in a foot race against the Dragoons along that right hand edge. The Vulture sweeping forward. One tank sieged underneath. The Vulture's going to encapsulate this and the Dra Dragoon's just going to march forward and wipe out as many siege tanks as they can, recognizing they're caught a little bit in the midst of this. So two Dragoons able to sneak to the bottom right. Does Tucson continue and either stop that top right nexus or go for, which I think is the better position, I think he's going to do that, is reestablish and get a foothold up on this high ground plateau. Where he doesn't really need to wipe out any nexuses. He just needs to send in, I don't know, some vultures to top right to make sure that Nexus isn't producing top right and keep the, the pressure from there and he'll, he'll be able to win this pretty easily. Zelt leg speed not quite there. The Arbiter... I don't know that there was an Arbiter produced earlier, but the Arbiter not on forward field, even if it does produce right this second, I don't think it's going to have stasis in time. So Tucson, yeah, barreling forward now with a whole bunch of siege tanks. This is a do or die situation for Fisheye, so he needs to kind of engage this. But I don't think he just has the raw bulk to make it happen. So Tucson playing this beautifully. We do have some vultures skirting up to go ahead and provide some support. Yeah, the mines in between. So now, yeah, waiting on that Arbiter. The Arbiter is here, but there are plenty of mines underneath and there's already a forward commsat. So all the Dragoon's dead by the time the Arbiter is able to get here. And the mine, ooh, just barely missing that siege tank. Now going to go ahead and scoot up and more siege tanks barreling forward. And all of a sudden Tucson has the supply lead, has a massive foothold. He has the boot up here. 
threatening everything up above and he can easily create a little bit this is a little bit earlier to do that uh, earlier to do this i think but he can easily create a wedge allow the reinforcements from the high ground to do this assail so never mind it looks like he's be able going to be able to execute it just fine and then create a siege tank line right here and that's going to threaten that top left nexus and fisheye looks like he's going to fall in a set Oof. arbiter doing what it can uh Goliath might be able to sneak up. That's like a slight delay, but honestly not. Look at this siege tank line. In between all this, more vultures stream their way forward. And I'm wondering, there could be a fourth base tech. We have the bottom, the Dragoon's bottom right to maybe delay that. Also sneaking up. <laughs> Great timing. Those pro I don't know what those probes were thinking. There's GG from Fisheye. Good games, though. Set one through three. Well played from Tucson. Unfortunately, I do not have any other... I don't think I have any other replays from this group. So I'll have to move on to group D, and then we will shift to the round of eight and see how it goes from there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.